Bon Johnny. Bon Johnny, viewers. Uh, excuse me, uh, Percy. I say Bon Johnny, not you. Yes, uh, sorry, Lloyd. Hello, viewers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. And, and Poonabs, Lloyd. Ladies and gentlemen, and Poonabs, and everything in between. Welcome back. Today, you've got two videos. Yes, because I'm very bored. So I'm doing two videos. Because, also, you commented so quickly. Thank you very much for that. Uh, much appreciated. So, last video, which is, again, just up there. Just up there. That was the Pierce R8, which we're taking a look at right now. I asked for a comment for the next ship. First one to comment must be large. We'd get to see that ship next. Thank you, Darth Alec. Buenas dias, senor. Please, the rainbow arc for the next one. Yes, for me, in the large ships, the R8 is the most underestimated ship. Yeah, I may well agree with you on that one. However, there is the bomber. We can't forget the bomber. Coming up today. Yes, we're actually going to uh, show you two ships today. Because uh, if I just show every single ship, it's going to drag on and on and on, isn't it? Uh, there's just going to be too many videos. And, hey, I'm running out of music as well, guys. I need to make some more music, so... Got to squeeze them in. <laughs> so, thanks, Darth Alec. And uh, to all the Darths out there, buenas dias. What next? Farhan! Thank you, Farhan. So, we've got uh, the, the Percy Punab vote. Farhan has said, please keep Percy. Ah, oh, Farhan, you are now my favourite follower. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we've got... Uh, now it's one and one, one. Yes, no, one, one. So, it's a tie, so we need more comments, please. Let me know if uh, Percy should stay or go. So, thanks again, Darth Alec. Thanks again, Farhan. Let's get into... The Rainbow Arc. We take a look at the large ships again. What have we got left? Well, we've got the Thripid, we've got the Ark, and we've got the Grenada. I'm going to do two of those today. And actually, I think what we'll do is the Ark and the Thripid. Oh, that's my old, my old company, the Ogrika. Yeah, the Punabs actually make the Ogrika range. Um... Okay, so let's load up the Ark. We'll go through that one. Now, the reason I'm doing two is because actually the Ark is, um, is... You'll see. Let's take a look first. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a towering monstrosity. However, it's quite a basic shape to look at. Uh, so this is it. This is it. Another huge, huge, huge ship. Let's take a walk underneath. I'm going to sprint this time, because you, you know what 140 meters was from the uh, the Pierce R8. This one is 130 meters, okay? Oh, look, we can just see up inside there. So you can see these kind of... Um, uh, this, this hull plating that doesn't look like any of it's actually connected. And that's because Rainbow is Photoly tech. And that's... That's tech that we mere humans and Punabs. We mere humans and Punabs just simply can't comprehend it. There we go. Now we know why it's called the Ark. It's because it looks like an Ark. Let's bring up bring up the stats. So there it is. Rainbow Ark. This is a uh, large, large ship, 38 meters wide, 30 meters high, 130 meters long. The supply. This had a, uh, again, a limited supply at a lower entry price. That was uh, 12,705 USDC, uh, then going up to 15,000 246 USDC. Very expensive. The reason for that is you're paying the premium for the Photoly Tech. 
Shall we read through the description? The Rainbow Arc embodies the highest attainable manufacturing practices to the known Star Atlas Metaverse. Utilizing photoly light levitation, the paneling of the Arc allows for facile transportation of cargo and personnel movements, ship chassis integrity, and active defensive hull security. A generous cargo hold makes for economically effective freighting, while the crew quarters accommodate luxurious and tranquil long-haul creature comforts. So uh, that first sentence there should not be underestimated. The Rainbow Arc embodies the highest attainable ship manufacturing practices to the known Star Atlas unit metaverse. You cannot get better than this tech, which would suggest to me, and I don't know because I don't make Star Atlas, but that would suggest to me just reading this, that this is gonna be uh, an incredible bit of kit. If you're interested in freighting, then you cannot get better well, the technology cannot get better than this. Obviously, the class can get bigger, but this is a large class, and it has the highest attainable manufacturing practices to the known Star Atlas Metaverse, utilizing photoly light levitation. All right. So, if you're going to be a freighter, this and you can and you can afford it, which check the marketplace, you might get a bargain right now. Hey, hey, not financial research. Uh, this could be a very very uh, good ship for you, a good earner. So yeah, these um, these plates on the hull, they apparently move. Take a look here, see? So they, they kind of morph and move uh, to, what, to what is required. So if you're loading a large, uh, something large on board, then they'll move and they'll open up a large uh, access hatch. Here's some more photos. Oh, and there, that's the uh, the active defences there. It looks like some of the shell plating is being jettisoned to protect the ship from attack. So uh, if we just go back to the description there. Where does it say? Active defensive hull security. That possibly is that. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Take everything I say with a pinch of salt. It's just my opinion. And here's inside got uh ah yeah you can see that the the hull plating here is like opening and uh, some cargo is being brought in so without further ado it's party time okay what music have i got for you today it's another track another uh, we're going along that synth wave kind of uh, kind of vibe i'm going to play two tracks for you today for two ships so let's have a quick uh, zip around this ship and turn up the music. Here we go. Ah, oh, get out of the way. Gee. Okay, here we go.
So, we'll just let that track end. It goes straight into the next one. And we'll take a quick look through the slots. So, we've got power supply, large, warp drive, capital. Capital on the warp drive. That's the Photoly tech right there. So, you're buying a large ship, but you're getting a capital size warp drive, a large radar, large tractor beam, and a capital size impulse engine. So, the Photoly, the Rainbow, know how to make engines, that's for sure. One shield generator, medium. Okay, so we're sacrificing a little bit on the shield generator there, medium. However, we've got a capital, capital hull reinforcement. Uh, and that's probably uh, to do with the active defensive uh, hull plating uh, malarkey. One medium countermeasure, one medium missile bay, four large weapon hardpoints. So, you know, it can fend for itself. It can fend off the uh, the looters, the pirates. Two large maneuvering thrusters. And crew, we've got a captain, a pilot, a co-pilot, an engineer, and two cargo foremen. What would that mean? Why do you need cargo foremen? I don't know. And I do care. Because I would imagine if you're running a business and... You know, you're earning money for freighting cargo. The last thing you want to be doing is waiting around in a dock, unloading cargo. Uh, you want to get that stuff off the ship quick, get the new stuff on, and get out of there, start earning the money. So maybe two cargo foremen would help you to unload and reload faster. I don't know. I'm just making it up here. Uh, and then modules. We've got a large cargo slot, a large mess hall, and an art gallery. Very nice. Ah. Uh, okay, so that is the Rainbow Arc. Just for you, Darth Alec. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's get back to that pad and let's do the next ship now. We're going to do the uh, the Thrippid. Oh my, I'm looking forward to the Thrippid, uh, even though I know all about it. Ha ha ha. Okay, yeah, that didn't quite make sense, uh, Percy. All right, let's load up. Large. The Ogrika Thrippid. Ping pong. There it is. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, so this is by no means... Um, the length of these other ships, but it's definitely tall, and this is a fighter, all right? Let's just, uh... Oh, my goodness! Get out of the way! God! Keep forgetting about that. I'm so sorry. Here it is. Here's the Ogre th Thrippid. And whilst you're looking at that, let me just type in Thrippid onto the Explorer. Explorer.staratlas.club. Link down below. Um, let's get that up so we can have a look at this. The Thrippid. Oh! Oh, very interesting. Take a look at this. So, it doesn't look as long as the other ships, does it? But apparently, it's 170 meters. That's a lot longer than the Ark. The Ark was 130, right? This, apparently, is 170. So, well, not sure what's going on there, unless it's going way off the pad, the landing pad. Let's just uh, settle the character here. We'll just park it right there. Get in this camera mode and take a look around. Get out of the way! <laughs> um, okay, so, it, yeah, I mean, it's going off of the pad. So maybe that's what it is. It's just set quite a bit further back um, than the, uh, the other ships were. Hmm, interesting. 170 meters. So this is the longest one so far out of the um, out of the large class that we've seen. And let's read out the description here. Where are we? There we go. So the Ogrika Thrippid is a testament to glorious soup. Super luxury Poonab culture. Uh, 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 excuse me, maybe I should introduce this one. Uh, the Poonab culture, while demonstrating powerful and brutal, brutal strength. 
Uh, no, I think we'll we'll leave you out of it, Percy, for this one. I think it's my. I think they prefer to hear my voice on this one. So the this large and heavy fighter also has a powerful rudder thruster for unusually quick maneuverability. What's that? Powerful rudder thruster for unusually quick maneuverability for a ship this size. The massive forward-facing cannons are positioned to obliterate any enemy on the business end of the Thripid. On top of being an arsenal powerhouse, the interior provides very comfortable and equally luxu luxury accommodations. The captain of a ship of this magnitude can utilize the weapon weaponry to establish a very safe escort environment. While enjoying the lush amenities for long distance space travel with a huge boost to peace of mind. Okay, so it's a mix of hard hitting weaponry with luxury as well. So, hey, that's a, that's a nice, uh, nice mix right there, but I guess you are paying for that luxury also. Oh, yes, Lord, we, we don't do things by half here. We Punabs like our luxury. And we also know how to build weapons, that's for sure. Okay, thanks, Percy. So here it is. Uh, supply now. So. There's the weapons there, you can see there. Supply. We had initial supply of 8,170 USDC. And that then went up, a uh, limited supply, that then went up to 8,955 USDC. But as always, check the marketplace. You might find a bargain. Should we take a look at some some uh, pictures here? Here's showing uh, different skins that you might you might get for the Thripid. Here's the in inside. That looks very very cool. Thank you, Lloyd. That's Bunab at its finest. Yeah, it does look nice. Some more concept art there. Blueprints. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And, uh, I mean, those, those weapons at the front look fantastic. So, what next? Maybe we'll put on a little bit of music, do the, uh, the old flyabout. If we get this out of the way, there we go. Let's put on some music next and do a little fly around. Okay. this so far. Where's the character? Whoa, yeah, look, look at her down there. All the way down there. This is a big ship, everybody. The Agrika, you know, they, they kind of have a, a kind of a fish-like look to them, don't they? An alien fish-like look.
let's turn the music down. So there it is, the Ogrika Thripid. A very fine looking ship right there. Shall we take a look at the slots? So here we have it. We have on the Thripid one large power supply, a large warp drive, a large radar, a large tractor beam, a large shield generator, a large impulse engine, maneuvering thruster is also large, four large weapon hardpoints, very difficult to miss those at the front there, or the forward end. Two large missile bays, nice, two missile bays, that's good. Two also large countermeasures, and one hull reinforcement, which is also large. Now on the crew, this is a fighter ship, so we've got the captain, the pilot, the co-pilot. We've got an engineer, nice, maybe that helps with repairs or something. Who knows? Uh, and two turret gunners, so that's going to help you. Uh, and also, I think you can level up crew. Eventually, you'll be able to level up crew. So if you get two really good uh, turret gunners on there, that's going to be one epic ship to battle with. And it's stunning looking as well. So if you like your luxury and you're willing to pay a little extra for that, the Ogrika Thripid may be for you. Let's get that out of the way. Right, there we go. So there you have it, folks. Two ships for you today, and all we've got left now is the Green Ada. So after that, we'll then, we'll then go on to the medium ships. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yes, and please make sure you subscribe. <laughs> please. Thank you, Percy. Much appreciated. Okay, everyone. Ciao for now. <laughs>